So, Mike, how disappointed were you when you heard that I was playing you in the movie? At first, actually, I was a little disappointed. <laughs> what were you expecting? <laughs> the first thing was, you know, Die Hard. You know, I'm thinking he's a guy that blows stuff up and he always survives and he gets the girl and all that sort of thing. <laughs> and I was like, man, there's no way. Why would Mark Wahlberg be interested in my story? Men and women who go out there and do jobs that are not that glamorous and do things that are dangerous and, and do things, in my opinion, that are pretty extraordinary or, or, or very, they're fascinating to me. Sure. Those are the kind of stories that I'm drawn to and the kind of things that I like to be a part. It's funny that when this project first came about, I didn't know that as a filmmaker that anyone could write a story about a bunch of, you know, redneck guys that are just out there working hard for a living. After talking with you in the beginning, when you saw the 60 Minutes piece, you and Pete had that great conversation about, you know, that's the story. I made it out the door, and I thought to myself, I've, I've accomplished what I set out to accomplish. I made it outside. At least now I can breathe. I may die out here, but I can breathe. Every time I remembered something about the Deepwater Horizon, it always just kind of registered with the natural disaster. BP now admitting that there is more than 5,000 barrels per day coming out. This spill is already America's second worst environmental disaster on record. I never registered the fact that, you know, 11 people have lost their lives. When did you first start working on a rig? Um, I went offshore the first time in 2006. Was it exciting? It was mesmerizing. Uh, we do uh, some dangerous work, but it's usually controlled. Uh, obviously, this night we lost control. It happens. It, it's, and I won't say it won't happen again because it probably will. I was just trying to kind of figure it out myself. If they just took the extra time, spent the extra money, they would have saved a considerable amount. I have to tell myself every day that they made the best decisions they could with the information they had. Up until now, they still don't know. I mean, all the evidence is in 5,000 feet of water um, and, of course, completely destroyed. We were breaking ground and completing tasks that had never been done before. Whatever popped up during the well, they would, would of course, log it, note it, and send that back to town, and, and they would build regulations based off of what we learned. We were discovering regulations as we drilled. Mark, I, I'm wondering if you can talk a little bit about the kind of emotional experience of plugging into this character, especially after getting to know the real man. Right after I, I met Mike and, you know, uh, convinced him to come and work on the movie with us, I was then, you know, had the privilege of meeting, you know, both Sydney and Felicia, and then really understanding his drive uh, and desire to just to get home to those two. It was pretty remarkable. And then, of course, being on set, having to see certain things being reenacted, then coming to set, seeing me with the wounds and the injuries that Mike had sustained, you know, his daughter welling up in tears, you know, not being able to look at me. And those things are, those things are very difficult. Very powerful. What was the most difficult part for you when making the movie? That, that is a uh, very good question. By far, the most difficult part for me was to, and, and forgive me for saying it this way, but to allow Pete to show these 11 men um, perish. And I had no firsthand knowledge of any of the situations they were in other than I knew the area of the rig they were on. It's all up to interpretation handing over that information to Pete and then letting him put his creative um, abilities and talent forward, to me, that was difficult. I'm, I'm a nuts and bolts, um, you know, mathematician type. Allowing someone's creativity um, to show how those people got killed was probably the most difficult thing for me. Maybe, Mike, you could talk a little bit about what it was like for you to have endured something so unbelievably hellish and then come out to find that the the public narrative is one that's completely misaligned with the experience you just had so earlier you said about um 
the environmental impact and that was kind of the main thrust of the story you were getting. And then once they did finally get the oil stopped, the story just faded off and the new cycle changed. Honoring those 11 men with this project, um, to me, brings the spotlight back around. As we're speaking right now, there are men and women offshore putting their lives uh, in harm's way so that we can do what we do, drive around in cars, fly on airplanes and all that sort of stuff. Getting that attention back um, to these 11 men who lost their lives is very critically important to me. That was our, our main focus, the loss of human life and honoring those people. The remarkable things that you and they did in order to survive and help others survive uh, was incredible. And to me, I just find that very inspiring, very heroic. A hero is not a is not a badge that I even want to wear. Um, what we did that night was react to a very bad situation. You're either going to fight it or you're going to flee. Most of us chose to fight. So the, the term hero to me is, is irrelevant. We were doing our job. We were doing the, everything we could to save as many people as we could. I, I would hope that most people would do the same thing.